Hello my fellow YouTubers and welcome back to Ivan Hikes the World. Today I'm going to be reviewing Eddie Bauer's Lukla Pro Mid Hiking Boots. I'm going to be conducting an unboxing, a review, and field testing them here in the Canadian wilderness. Now before I continue, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It lets me know you like what I'm doing. So all things being said and done, I'm going to take a real close look at these for you. I'm going to take you on an adventure with me through the bush, and you don't want to miss this one, so stick around. Before I get too far into this, full disclosure here, in no way am I sponsored or am I being paid by Eddie Bauer or anybody else. I'm doing this on my own accord and what I want to do is provide you with a qualitative review. That is, I'm not going to throw a bunch of numbers at you, I'm simply going to just explain what my experience has been using these boots and uh, hopefully it helps you make a more informed decision on whether or not this is the right product for you. All right, folks, moment of truth here. We're about to unbox these. Now, I have to admit, I did open them up just to verify I had the right boots in there, but I didn't take them out or anything like that. I just needed to put my eyeballs on them to make sure that I wasn't about to do an unboxing of the wrong uh, wrong product in, in the event that you know the warehouse sent me the wrong thing. Um, now, as you can see, when I did do that, I did damage the box, so this is my fault. Eddie Bauer did not ship me a box in this condition, so that is my own doing. It was taped shut, and when I went to remove the tape, uh, this tore. And I think, if I'm not correct, it's actually made using uh, recycled material, which is really nice, and we will talk a little bit more about their sustainability initiatives uh, moving forward. Um, so first things first, though, let's, uh, let's get these boots going. So let's open this up here, see what we're dealing with. Okie dokie. All right, so everything, as you can see, is nice and packed in there. We got our tissue paper. Okay. And there we are. There's the first boot. Let's get this out here. Okay, and here's our second boot. Tags and all, look at that. Okay, let me get right in there. All right. So I'll take these out and um, I'll uh, get you a, a better look at the entire uh, the entire boot. All right, we got them out of the box. Everything looks great. Again, these are Eddie Bauer Lukla Pro Mid Hiking Boots, okay? Now, I got to say, the minute that I got them out of the box, I was hit immediately with this high-quality leather smell. Now, my first kind of observation here is that I've actually got two types of leather, at least that I can tell, two types. We've got a more soft, pliable leather up here by the ankle, so, you know, as it as it rotates or pivots, um, it's not super rigid, gives you some mobility. But down here, it looks like you've got a lot of abrasion resistance, or, you know, even if you're, as you're shuffling from side to side, you might hit a rock here or there or something, a branch, and this should provide some protection. Um, while at the same time, you've got these sections of mesh, which provide breathability, okay? and that mesh extends all the way around around here to the ankle um, or the heel rather sorry and uh, you know we've got we've got it all up the tongue okay and uh, a big part here on the toe all right if I turn that around here that's what that side looks like okay um, so yeah I think we've got a good balance here between um, you know uh, protection and breathability now these are also a waterproof boot so there's some type of liner in there it doesn't say Gore-Tex in the description it's Eddie Bauer's own thing that they call it uh, I think it's trademarked or copy uh, written um, and what else can I say now let's examine kind of like the toe and heel protections so here at the toe as you can see it kind of comes up here you've got a little bit of protection from the actual sole itself um, and then what I was worried about initially was that this might have been like a soft fabric but it's actually it's pretty rigid okay so it's almost like um this is definitely synthetic i don't think that this is rubber so uh but it's definitely rigid so you are getting um good protection there and i think you're yeah we've got a, a combination of both stitching and glue 
Okay, so if we if we look at that, there's glue connecting the components, but they're also double stitched on there. That is actually really, really good in my opinion. You don't you don't always find that. Sometimes you'll just see things that are glued on, um, but this is reinforced by stitching. So um, interesting there. Okay, so let's take a look at that heel. Now the heel here, as you can see, there seems to be good, good protection that comes up from the sole. It's a little bit spongy up here. It's super rigid and, and hard up here. Um, so I mean, I, I would say that you're covered on both ends of this, both on the toe and on the heel. So another thing that's super nice about these, uh, right off my first impressions here, is that these metal grommets are super sturdy. Like they're, they don't seem cheap at all. Um, there's two on both ends and as you can see like they're really they're really bolted in there okay so those are meant to last um one area of concern might be these little loops here now i don't know what the technical word for that type of lacing um structure is but um the only thing i can think of is that because they don't directly lace through say the leather if these were to wear down let's say they're somehow cheap or compromised. If they were to wear down, you're going to lose the ability to lace these correctly. Um, and that would really suck. Now, Eddie Bauer highlights a lot of things about these boots, such as um, their breathability. And I, I did already kind of touch on that, so I'm not gonna get too much into it, but I will talk about the mesh. Uh, you can definitely feel, I think, the waterproof membrane underneath the mesh. There's something that's, that's kind of rigid under there. Um, but they also say that somehow through this fabric construction um, you're getting uh, water wicking so moisture wicking that is where it's the the fabric's ability to kind of uh, suck up moisture whether that's water or um, sweat from your foot your sock what whatever it might be um, and um, and and keep your feet dry and also allow for quick drying of the boot so um, they're kind of looking for that combination between breathability, waterproofing, and uh, water wicking to keep your feet as dry as possible. So let's get into the boot itself here. Um, as we'll see, they've they've put in, I don't know what the word for this is, but definitely keeps, you know, it's pretty rigid. Um, you can see there, Eddie Bauer. Um, keeps the boot intact during shipping, so it would never like, crush or anything let's check out the insole i don't know if it's a removable insole uh, yes it is so there is a re removable insole i'm not going to remove it because i sometimes they don't really place back actually i think <laughs> that's exactly why i didn't want to remove it but oh well i'll just kind of wiggle that back into where i want it um but as you can see yeah you can put in your own insoles by removing that those are removable that's great all right so the tongue here is also really interesting it's really wide and to me what i what i kind of suspect is that it's going to allow my feet to kind of splay out i should have a lot of wiggle room um these should be pretty comfortable and especially after long hikes when your feet start to swell up um i would think that that the extra width there to the tongue and and just the way the boots designed it, it should really help maintain a certain degree of comfort uh especially on those endurance hikes talk about that part that takes all your punishment and abuse probably the most important part well arguably the most important part and that would be the sole so here we're dealing with vibram really good to see because vibram makes top notch soles um now when I touch this, there's some stickiness, but what stands out is that it's definitely a rigid, well-constructed sole. Like it's not, it's not super soft where it's going to wear down easily. Um, looks like there's going to be a lot of life in this while there's a lot of traction. Um, if we take a closer look, you can see there's these little nodules in there. I'm sure when you put your weight down, they kind of squish out and provide you with extra traction as well. So really good to see. Now, the sole specifics, let's take a look here. So Vibram Compound, this is the XS Trek sole. Uh, trail ready, rapid response, optimal balance of traction and durability, responsive on unpredictable terrain, engineered for stability and comfort. Now, I didn't talk about it yet, but Eddie Bauer, um, their, part of their sustainability plan is not always using recycled materials, but rather to provide long life for their products by making them really, really good. Now, at $220, um, you know, it's, it's an expensive boot it's an expensive shoe it's not the most expensive out there but you're definitely you want to get your money's worth right um and so you put all these pieces together you know um the sole uh, the leather protection uh the really you know 
solid grommets that are on here. It all comes together to kind of fit that that mission statement and and what these de these boots were ultimately designed for. All right, one thing that I forgot to do while I was over on the examination table was measure the lugs. Nowhere in the specs does it say what the lugs are. Um, so looking at them, as you can see here, all right. Now, according to my ruler and my best measurement, it's three millimeter. So you're getting three mil lugs on these soles. And uh, I think, you know, to be fair to the boot, while there's some boots that run deeper lugs, this is, uh, it's adequate for what the boot is designed for. So what other details stand out to me about the boot? Well, it's got a fiberglass shank installed between the inner sole and the outer sole. Um, fiberglass, super lightweight material, but super hard, right? So what we're doing is we're getting extra protection without compromising weight. Now, what I can imagine that helps us with is both if we're walking on rocky surfaces, right, we're not going to feel that as much. The other thing is um, if we potentially are going to get a penetration uh, to the boot and hurt our foot, uh, that's there to add an extra layer of protection. Um, the other thing I can talk about is in the midsole, they use EVA foam. Now, EVA foam is super durable, long lasting and comfortable. Um, and that's what's giving you your cushion and that springy motion in this boot. Um, there is a con with it in that it is not like considered an eco-friendly product. And for me, that's important, but I kind of justify these boots, purchasing these boots because of something else, which I'll talk about in a bit. Um, about EVA foam though, um, I mean, it's there for comfort. It's there to um, absorb impacts and to really make your, your hike more enjoyable, right? Um, but at the same time, uh, throughout the lifetime of these boots, and then it's the afterlife where it becomes a concern, is that EVA is not a material that biodegrades at all. It's derived from petroleum and um, it's basically going to persist in the environment forever unless somehow we find a way to recycle these things. Now, um, I get around the, uh, the issue of this based on Eddie Bauer's claim that these are boots I'm going to have for a very long time. So um, just the fact that they're made so well that the EVA foam will last and last and last and I'm not going to have to buy another product. Um, I'm using less materials and therefore I'm introducing less waste into the environment over the long run. So that brings us to Eddie Bauer's sustainability plan. Eddie Bauer is a high quality brand that kind of prides itself on, well, just that high quality products that will last a long time. So, I mean, they do discuss that and I don't want to kick a dead horse here, um, but that is pretty much why I bought these, despite the fact that they've got nothing recycled in them. Um, it's that lifetime and I'm using less raw materials over the course of several years, hopefully. Now, um, they do do things like they are proactive in environmental um, initiatives and so on. I believe it's, yeah, they've had a 30 year relationship with uh, American forests. That is to, I guess, help replant forests and offset carbon. Uh, because as we know, forests sequester carbon from the atmosphere and they play a vital role in fighting, you know, climate change and things like that to keep our nature what it is, what we love, you know. Um, the other thing that they do is that they've been, um, you know, making an effort to use uh, more um, uh, recycled materials in their products while at the same time finding materials um, for their products that have less of an environmental impact. So they leave less of an eco footprint, if you will. Now, I'm not going to get into all the details and talk about this in any more depth, but if you are interested in reading it, I am going to post a link uh, below in the description. So have a look if these types of things are important to you too. All right, it's time to go field test these and get on with the next segment of this review. I'm going to put these on. I'm going to get out into the woods, put them through muck, sand, water, everything that I can find and see how they perform. I'll be back in the next part and let you know what I think. I've come because I'm still in Manitoba. I've come to Birds Hill Provincial Park and we're doing the Eddie Bauer Lukla uh, Pro Mid Hikers or Mid Pro Hikers. I can't remember the order of the words exactly. But uh, anyway, I am uh, selecting two trails today. The first one I'm starting with is Lakeview, which I've done a, a video on before. Um, doing Lakeview because it's a combination of sand 
concrete which I'm on and uh, I'll probably encounter a little bit of like mud along the way something like that as I go off trail uh, I want to see how they hold up on on concrete you know what type of cushioning do I get how do they feel after I think it's about 11k on this trail after they how, how do my feet feel after 11k or my knees or anything like that um, does that EVA um, foam help with you know supporting my my body and, and stuff like that so yeah I'm gonna put them to the test here and then we're gonna go do another long trail but that time we're gonna do it more like on a, a natural trail so it'll be like mossy dirty grassy uh, typical trail that we'll find here and uh, try and find some wet spots I'm already starting to notice that they are water resistant because there was some rain and fog overnight and the grass is really wet so um, I'll make sure I drag my feet through the grass and uh, see if my toes get wet right okay so check it out check out that toe the water is literally beating off of these all right waterproof bit there uh, seems to be functioning really well and my feet are warm I don't feel any water getting through and uh, yeah so far so good So testing out Eddie Bauer, Lukla Pro Mid Hikers here uh, on beautiful uh, Lakeview Trail, Birds Hill Park, Manitoba. And um, I mean, I want to talk about the trail as much as I do about the hikers, but uh, we're here to do the hikers. So let's get to it. As you can see, I'm in sand, kind of muck, kind of swamp, wetlands. Uh, it's going from wet grass to concrete to uh, like, again, this. Um, the lugs are digging. Um, I can feel the traction. I'm about, what, 3 or 4K in. I feel no fatigue whatsoever on my feet. Um, the boot is remarkably, like, the boot is achieving two things, okay? So, like, where balance is concerned, the boot is, it's, it's cupping around my foot. It, it, it really is. It's providing like this, this secure space around. I mean, they're, they're mid tops, right? So they're, they're coming up around my ankle area and they're providing that structure and that support without really compromising flexibility or my ability to move. These are right out of the box. So um, immediately, like it's immediate comfort. So if you are going to invest in these, you definitely don't need to worry about taking them on a, uh, at least a short hike. I mean, I'll see how my feet, you know, are faring after 20K, 30K today. The only other thing I will touch on is the arch support. So what I'm doing is I'm getting, uh, well, two things actually. Oh my God. Yeah. The list just keeps growing in my mind. Um, toe box room is there. Arch support is there because they are snug and they, they kind of contour your feet really nicely. Um, you know, but you're, you also get enough of a, a toe box there to, to be able to move your, your toes around and everything seems to be like just where you want it, you know? Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's all I have for now. Um, I think, uh, you know, we'll see how I'll try and soak these a little bit more. See if I, I can kind of compromise that, that waterproof barrier somehow, if they get like really saturated. Um, that's all I got. We'll talk to you later. folks we finished the lakeview trail um on eddie bauer lukla pro hiker day and uh we're gonna go tackle the esker trail so we did lime kiln most recently esker is one that we kind of did i think it was our first trail when we got to manitoba and we're gonna do this circuit here for 6k that should bring us to about maybe like 13 kilometers on the day and then we'll see if we can add in another 10k, 5k. I don't know. We'll find we'll find something fun to do anyway. I've been um as you can see like boots wet and muddy but my feet aren't so it's keeping the water out all right so i just got to 10k and uh chucking along here doing good 
And uh, you know, 10K is usually a pretty good measuring stick for me to see how the rest of the, the hike's gonna go. Um, you know, I can pretty much judge by how my toes feel, how my feet feel, my knees, the rest of my body, whatever. Um, and so how do I feel? Well, I feel like I've worn for 10 kilometers new boots, but good boots. <laughs> so there, there's, I think like with anything, there's a little bit of a breaking in period. Uh, I wouldn't say that my feet hurt or are sore. Maybe I've got a few hot spots in areas that my feet aren't used to. Um, and if I stepped a certain way, like I'll feel, if I kept doing that, I'd get a blister developing. Um, but it's because these are brand spanking new. And I'm, you know, uh, I think my average hiking speed here is like 7.1 kilometers uh, per hour. So I, I'm moving. And uh, of course, you know, my feet are also moving in, inside of those boots, not in a bad way, not in the way that they're supposed to, right? But at that speed, you're still gonna get some friction, uh, you know, regardless of what kind of socks you're wearing. And I am wearing good socks, uh, darn tough hiking socks. So um, yeah, 10K in, we're good to go. We're good to go for another 10K for sure. Um, I'm gonna be a little bit mindful how I step just to avoid those hot spots. Um, but, uh, you know, definitely right out of the box, you can start rocking 10K hikes without, uh, you know, much problems. And uh, yeah, so just gonna focus on the next little bit of trail ahead and uh, we'll see you again soon. Hey guys, I made it back and wow, uh, what a trip what boots uh really impressed um before i get too far ahead of myself here i ended up doing a third trail uh called cedar bog trail which i didn't really record it was more about uh just pushing the distance up towards about 20k which is where i really wanted to kind of feel how these how my feet felt in them after that distance that being said i did record some pretty cool footage of this little micro habitat on the trail um, it's like a bog with different cedars and tamaracks and things like that. Uh, it's definitely worth checking out. Uh, I'll drop that probably a few days after this video drops. Now I'm going to give these boots a short but thorough breakdown because uh, I think I covered a lot of the things while I was on the trail. Uh, let's start with waterproofing. Now um, the membrane helped. I mean I didn't get wet feet once. I went through rain, I went through sloppy, muddy, wet puddles, uh, plenty of wet grass. There were times where the entire boot itself was was pretty darn wet and if they were any other kind of boot that was non-waterproof my feet would have been soaked. As for any boot that has this type of membrane in there, um, you're going to feel a temperature increase. My feet were warm, not hot per se, it was only 15 degrees Celsius outside. Um, I mean I'd be curious to see how hot my feet would get in like 30 degree weather, but they definitely... Um, my feet were breathing. They definitely were breathing because they should have been sweating. They should have been wet with perspiration. That was not the All right. So as for the traction, as you can see, they're still super dirty. Um, they held up in mud, slime, muck, whatever I was walking in, sand. Um, the one thing that I'll say they didn't really perform too well on was wet rock. Okay. Thing. You get your structure and your support. They're comfortable right out of the box. And they're so well made, you're going to get a lot of lifetime out of them for your investment. Um, now, of course, take my assessment with a grain of salt go do your own research try them on if you can um, but ultimately i hope that you found this helpful informative and uh, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one take care